My sermon is entitled, The Courage to Love, The Courage to Conceive Love, based on verses from Luke chapter 1 for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Mary's response to the visit of the angel when she was told that Christmas is coming, are you ready? She said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. So here we are on December 20th, five days from Christmas, and the question remains, are you ready for Christmas? And how is it that we can respond like Mary did? Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary had a visit from the angel Gabriel and told her that her life would change. If I told you today that your life could change, how would you respond? Do you have the courage to receive the gift of love, conceive it in your very inner soul and give birth to love? Could you become like Mary, a God bearer? Do you have the courage to conceive love, to bear it into the world? Of course, when I ask you if you have the courage to conceive, I'm not talking about the physical ability to conceive and give birth. What I'm suggesting is the ability to conceive spiritually. And the spiritual life pertains to all people, regardless of gender and age or condition. I'm suggesting that we are each and every one of us called to give birth to love in our hearts and in our souls, and to be prepared to live that out in the world. Augustine was a smart dude who lived a long, long time ago, and he put it this way when he reflected upon the visit of Mary in Luke chapter 1. He said that Mary first conceived Christ through her ear. And this is the power of hearing a powerful word. The angel Gabriel came to Mary and relayed to her a message, a word from the Lord. And hearing that transcendent word through the ear, for Mary initiated the process of conception. But then Augustine went on and added more. He said, Mary also conceived Christ in her heart. This means that Mary was open to the movement of the Spirit in her life. There is a knowing in our minds about knowledge, but there is a deeper knowing that we have in our hearts. And there is a willingness that comes from our heart, the willpower, the willingness to change, to become pregnant by the Spirit. So Mary is remarkable and is an example for us to follow because she was able to hear God speaking. She was able to integrate it, to make sense of it in her soul. And she was willing to unite her will to that of the word coming to her. As a result, she was able to conceive love Are you able to do the same thing Mary did? Are you able to be receptive to the wonder of life all around us? Are you able to flow with the rhythm of life as it ebbs and flows, the ups and downs, the highs and lows? Are you able to be intimate with the divine and the Holy One works in your life? and in the world. Perhaps this is a lot to take in five days before Christmas. Our minds are distracted. There is so much busyness around us and so much business to take care of. I get that. But it's like this. Why do we celebrate Christmas if we don't expect anything to change? 
Why welcome the Christ child and then expect everything go, to go back to normal? Do we expect Jesus, the very revelation of love coming into the world, God with us, Emmanuel, to come and maintain the status quo? Shouldn't we expect to be different? Shouldn't we expect the world to be different at the coming of the Messiah? If Christmas is the mass of Christ, it's got to be more than a sentimental feeling, more than a passing feeling of like indigestion that just kind of goes away after a while, right? I mean, Christmas should change. It should, should do us good. It should do something like it did for Ebenezer Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Near the end of that wonderful, wonderful short book, Scrooge is visiting his very own grave, and he looks upon the tombstone and sees his name engraved there. And it was a gift given to him by the ghost of Christmas future. And he knew that he had to change, that things had to be different. Otherwise, he would end up alone and no one to mourn his loss. And so he says, I am not the man I was. I will be different in the future. I will honor Christmas with my heart. I will live it in the past and in the present and in the future. Christmas coming changed Mary. Christmas coming changed Scrooge. It gave him a whole new awareness, a new consciousness, literally a new life. Scrooge stopped playing it safe. He stopped counting the cost because doing so was costing his own life. What in your life needs to change? Where are you playing it safe to the detriment of your own soul? Where can you let go and fall in love? Mary, she certainly expected the things to be different as a result of the visitation of the angel Gabriel. You see, she didn't have a vaccine coming to get us back to normal, God forbid. She couldn't rely on the government to provide any resources. She didn't have information coming to her 24-7 from online news, from TV, from newspapers. There was no system in place to improve her lot in life. She was a nobody and nobody cared about her. She had no upward mobility. When she looked around and saw poverty and hunger and lack of education, when she heard that 320,000 people have died of a pandemic in the United States alone, when she saw homelessness and mental illness, and when she looked around and saw these things, that was as good as it gets. And Mary knew that she could count only on God. And that was enough. So when Gabriel comes to Mary and says to her that a Savior is coming, that the Messiah, the promised Messiah is going to come and fulfill all the promises and bring down the proud and lift up the lowly, well, then, of course, She's going to receive that gift and respond with singing a great song of joy. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Perhaps we can think of it this way. To receive Christmas, to be like Mary, it's like falling in love. It's like emotional intimacy. It's like sexual intimacy, making love, conceiving love, bearing love, bringing love into the world, being a God bearer. In the Western world, we are 
all in our heads. We like to think our religion. And so the Eastern Christians are helpful for us in many ways. And one of those is they talk about everyone having what they call a virgin point. The virgin point for every human is a secret cell, the innermost heart. And this virgin point is a place that only God can go. And it remains unformed in us until God touches it and impregnates us. And the language, the sexual imagery is intentional and appropriate. It is the place where human and divine meet and make love and create love. And love is born and born out into the world. And see, when God comes to our virgin point, we return to our origin. We become more fully who we are created to be. That's why Christmas feels like home. Christmas should feel like home because it feels like us becoming our truest self. It's like lighting a candle and seeing yourself for the first time. It's as if someone else lights a candle and seeing you for the first time loves you for who you are, no strings attached. Christmas should be like this too. That's what Christmas meant for Mary. Why can it be so for us as well? Aren't we called to love God with our whole being, not just our minds? How can love possibly be true love if it's only a cognitive assent? Do you have people in your life who say that they love you and it's, that's all that it is? It's just words, just something. I mean, when we love someone and when we let someone love us, it's with our whole being. So what would it take for you to let go of what you expect and become pregnant, expecting love to completely change you, to make you more human, to make you more alive? Mary was a young, simple, uneducated, poor, young woman. Yet she seems to have the wisdom that our superior modern ways often miss completely. Mary knew that there was a great lover holding her, and she allowed that great lover to have love's way with her. That's what it means when she says, here am I the servant of the Lord? Let it be with me according to your word. She became completely connected with life, and she bore that life into the world. She moved from ego consciousness to being, to being love-drawn. She was no longer fear-driven. She was pulled into love and let love follow her, follow love into the mystery of life. I think you might agree with me that that's a pretty enticing place to be at any time, and especially after a year like we've had in 2020. That's where I want to be, that intimacy I think that's where we all want to be. How do we get there? There's a great line in Phillips Brooks' Christmas Carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Perhaps you've heard it as you were shopping at Walmart or some other store piped in over the speakers. 
I'd like to suggest that these beautiful words can perhaps be a paraphrase of how Mary thought and how she felt about her life after she heard the word from God. O little child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. Be born in us today. You need a new birth. I need a new birth. Our world needs a new birth. The status quo is literally killing us. Playing it safe is no longer safe. We need a radical transformation to be brought to life by love, to bring love to life. And so that is my prayer for you, that you can be like the Virgin Mary, that your heart may melt at the sound of an angel coming to you saying, fear not, fear not, you have found favor with God. It is my prayer that your heart might receive, that your soul may conceive, and that you, like Mary, might bear love into the world. And this time, this time next year, that you and I and our world will be different, will be better, more loving, more kind, more joyful, more sane, more human.